Trump's legal cases looming over his 2024 run. Yesterday, the DOJ's Jack Smith filing an argument with the U.S. District Court disputing Trump is immune from election interference charges as oral arguments are set to begin just five days before the Iowa caucus. Fox News contributor and former Congressman Jason Chaffetz joins us now. Wow, Jason, this just never ends for Donald Trump. I, I, I can't believe everything that's being thrown on. By the way, also an appeals court has said that a group of U.S. Capitol Police are now allowed to move forward with a, a case that they're filing against Donald Trump as well. Um, where do you see all this going? Um, I see it as a political vendetta. I think they're worried about him, uh, Donald Trump, on the polls. He's beating uh, Joe Biden on every single poll that I've, I've seen. I think there's one outlier in that. Um, and I think the timing is highly suspicious. I mean, here, literally less than a week before the Iowa caucuses, they're in court. I think that was right on the political agenda of Jack Smith and the Department of Justice to have that ha have that all that happen uh, right in the midst of the primary season. And I, I think it's disgusting. You know, Jason, all of this to me is election interference, because obviously Donald Trump is, is wrapped up in all this. Uh, yes, he's doing great on the polls. Uh, that's true. But you have to imagine this is distracting. He's not as focused on his campaign as he should be um, because of this. We were just having a discussion off air after our last um, top of the hour segment where we're just like, what do, the, what do Democrats think will happen to this country if they manage to keep Donald Trump off the ballot? Um, it, it, what would happen? I mean, I, I'm sure you've thought this through as well. Um, I don't think they care about that. I think they... Uh, I think they're more intent on taking down Donald Trump by any means necessary than they are in, you know, preserving democracy. I mean, how many times have we heard the Democrats lecture us all about, oh, Donald Trump will get rid of democracy? And so what did the Democrats do? Oh, let's come up with this strategy to make sure he's not even on the ballot. That sounds like an attack on democracy. So um, all these all this projection about how bad Donald Trump would be and all these different issues that he would be as fascist he'd be a dictator, he'd do all this stuff. They're all scare tactics, but it's backfiring because I think the American people remember the four years under Donald Trump were pretty good times under Donald yeah. Trump. And he didn't do any of those things. Yeah, they're going to keep trying to keep him off the ballot. But, you know, more than half the country wants him on there, at least wants the choice. And again, I just think this breaks the country. I, 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 I'm really worried. I mean, we're on the eve of 2024 yeah. and I'm really worried about the country moving into the next year. Like what what else will they try? Um, and, and, and when the American people feel backed up against the corner because they're not even allowed to vote for who they want to vote for or even given a choice, I, I just don't know what happens to the country. It's, it's, it's actually a very volatile, scary um, situation. We even have David Axelrod this week kind of saying, well, maybe this might end, end badly. Uh, you think so? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, you have yeah. a great show lined up, Jason. Uh, Sunday Morning Futures, you're hosting right after this show. Who are your guests? What do you have for us? Yeah, filling in for Maria Bartiromo. And hey, there's a lot happening in the news. So we're kicking things off with the uh, Attorney General of Texas, Ken Paxton. Uh, the Department of Justice and Homeland Security, they don't want the help of Texas. They want to sue Texas for trying to help stem the flow of illegal immigration. We have Representative Michael Waltz coming on, talking about the Navy Lieutenant uh, Ridge Alconis, who was incarcerated in Japan for nearly three years mm. for a driving accident, brought back to the United States. He He's still in jail. We're going to talk to him about that. A great New Year's message from Cardinal Dolan with an interview with Maria. And then Robert O'Brien, the former national security advisor for Donald Trump. We're going to talk about that attack by the Houthis on the Maersk ship there in the Red Sea and what what uh, our, uh, Iran with a nuclear bomb, what that would look like for the world. And then we're going to wrap it up with uh, Beth Van Dyne, the congresswoman from Texas. A lot happening with Congress starting next week. They've got to do funding. They've got the the uh, Hunter Biden and Joe Biden, I should say Joe Biden impeachment inquiry. There's a lot happening there. It'll be a packed show. Hope you can join us at the top of the hour. Oh, we're definitely tuning in. Sounds like an awesome show. Thank you, Jason, and happy new year. I love this story. In the new year, you're set to bring a new challenge to the separation of church and state in America's public schools. As the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Oklahoma pushes to create America's first religious school entirely funded by taxpayers. 
Our next guest is defending the groups pushing to use public funds for religious education. Alliance Defending Freedom President Christian Wagoner joins us now. Christian, thanks for being here. As I understand it, Oklahoma has a charter school uh, program, and the state is simply saying we're going to allow religious institutions to use that program as well, starting with this particular program. You're exactly right. The Constitution, consistent with the Supreme Court's decisions, has said that it's wrong for government to treat religious organizations unequally. So if they're offering a public benefit or a funding program, it can't exclude individuals or groups just because they're religious. So this program uh, offers public funding and charter school approval to all kinds of different schools, and that should include those religious schools that, that would like to participate. You're exactly right. So when I hear the word charter, uh, that means publicly funded, but it has, it has so far meant it has to be entirely secular. And what Oklahoma is saying is Christian schools, religious schools should have the same opportunity to apply for that to start a school. And you believe the Constitution defends their right to do so. Absolutely. The Constitution prevents religious discrimination, and the Supreme Court has said that time and again. The First Amendment ensures that we have a pluralistic society. It's not meant to create a wall removing religion from public life. And Pete, I think one point that has to be made here is not necessarily about the school's right, but about parents' rights. Yeah. At Alliance Defending Freedom, we work every day to ensure parents can make decisions that are in the best interest of their kids. And educational choice is in the best interest of, of parents and of kids. No doubt. And this is the next level. And it's one thing to get a, a voucher and then choose where to go with it. This is more direct. Now, I would suspect this will get challenged, right? Yes, it has. Actually, when we represent the virtual uh, school board charter, the board there, and their decision was consistent with Oklahoma's governor's interpretation as well as the then attorney general's. But now there's been an activist group and a new attorney general that has filed suit and the case is before the Oklahoma Supreme Court right now. And uh, where do you think that, how do you think that'll uh, play out in Oklahoma? And then I, I presume it will be challenged potentially all the way to the Supreme Court. It very well could be. Uh, states can no longer hide behind state constitutions to disguise religious bigotry. And that's what this is. Religious organizations and parents have the right to be able to make decisions that are in the best interest of their kids and align with their faith. And they shouldn't be excluded just because they're religious. In fact, the Supreme Court has actually said that's odious to the Constitution. So I'm very hopeful about how this decision will turn out. I love out. what you're doing. We've been so backwards for so long. We stripped God out of our public institutions. We took a letter written by Thomas Jefferson to the Danbury Baptists and decided there was a wall of separation between all things, getting it exactly the opposite of what our founders intended. Absolutely. That's a historically inaccurate version. And the First Amendment exists to ensure that we can all make these deep personal choices on our own behalf and not have activists or bureaucrats have a stranglehold over what our children are taught. It's freedom of religion, not freedom from religion. Uh, Christian, thanks so much for sharing it and have a happy new year. God bless you. Thank you. You too. Keep us posted. All right. A million people are set to flood into Times Square to ring in the new year. And our own Rick Reitbuth is there live counting down the hours, really the minutes at this point for him. Plus, break out the bubbly. We've got the tips and tricks on how to saber champagne like a champ. And we'll all try it ourselves. Times Square, where at least a million people are expected for the ball drop tonight at midnight. One excited viewer, my daughter Gwen, <laughs> impressed by this morning's coverage. She writes, wow. Rick is on top of the New Year's ball. Rick, she wrote that <laughs> note for you. She was motivated by you. The man himself, Rick Wright. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? When you, Jen, sent that to me, and I thought, I think I'm no longer grumpy. Oh, <laughs> I think that just oh, fixed my whole problem. Gwen, Gwen. Yes. You. Gwen brought your sparkle back. You <laughs> wonder back. She brought my sparkle back. <laughs> Some, something had to happen, and it's Gwen, which is beautiful in all kinds of ways. Jen is beautiful, and Gwen, also beautiful, Jeff Strauss. Oh. So I met you probably 17 years ago, I think, at this event. You are the executive producer of all of this Times Square evening event, which is a big responsibility. 
Uh, together, the Times Square Alliance in New York City, NYPD, FDNY, Sanitation, the mayor's office do a great job making a party for the entire world. Yeah, it's a party. It's also got to be safe, which is a big deal in New York. Oh, my God. That NYPD makes it safe, fun, and friendly for everyone. And I'm dressed like a reveler tonight. I got my gloves. I got my scarf. I got my necklace. I got my hat. And this year, thanks to our friends at Fountain Blue, we're bringing back the eyeglasses. And I thought, what better, please? All right, this is this is my revelry for the year. Tell me about You're what's going to be. I didn't good. know that Times Square, it makes sense, is in the shape of a bow tie. From an aerial view, if you look down at Times Square, 45th Street is the point where they come. the two triangles come together. And this year, we're celebrating the bow tie on the ball itself. At 12.04, we're gonna be celebrating the 120th anniversary of Times Square New Year's Eve, the 70th anniversary of Fountain Blue by so, yeah. turning the ball into a new bow tie pattern. And the ball's gonna go up, it's gonna come back down where it'll rest year round above the 2024. Yeah, this is here when you come to visit New York, you can see the, the, the uh, numbers here, the 2024. You can see this ball year round here. And we now have, you guys have set up this new thing. We've got an amazing view of Times Square right here. Tell me what it's going to be like for the people in Times Square tonight. Oh my, there's no moment like it where right before midnight, Paul Anka is going to come out and sing his classic My Way with special Times Square New Year's Eve lyrics, then right into his inspirational rendition of Imagine. We're going to be up on our feet like we've been for over six hours and then right into that midnight countdown where the world comes together as we count down those final seconds in unison. I can't think of any other moment like it filled with hope, filled with joy and goodwill for the future. And then the ball comes down, it touches the numerals, the numerals light up and a blizzard of colorful confetti where people have written wishes inside that confetti. So when you're in Times Square, you can literally reach into the sky and pull down one of the tens of thousands of wishes from people from all over the world and you can read it to each other which my wife and I do every year. I had no idea that that confetti has handwritten notes and it's hand thrown out. It's not like some big machines that are blowing out that confetti. No, we have over a hundred. We have a hundred confetti dispersal engineers. They practice ahead of time. You got to fluff it. You got to feel it and then you make it float. It's That's fantastic. amazing. I love it. Jeff Strauss, best of luck oh, to you. Thanks. You have a big responsibility on your on your back uh, shoulders <laughs> today. I know you'll nail it like you do every year, but absolutely amazing. Guys, did you have any idea that all that confetti is thrown out by actual people, not by machines? Dispensal no engineers clue. or whatever it was, and they have wishes in them. That's pretty cool. I, I learned really something, cool. Rick. Yeah. Nicely done. I yeah. need to get a whistle there up go. there real quick. Just so Happy we'll New talk Year. Off, we'll talk off Happy there. New Happy, New <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. All right. Well, we're counting down the hours until 2024, and it's not New Year's Eve without a bottle of bubbly, and you've got it all here for us. Here yeah. to show us how to saber champagne uh -huh. like a pro is this sommelier is awesome. Yvette Russell. Oh Thanks for being here. Yeah. Thank you very much for having me, folks. Okay, so um, I guess we're going to get right into it. Yeah, yeah let's Okay, it. let's yeah. do this. So right. we're just going to get... Do you know why, why champagne is, is New Year's? Why, well, it's one of the most celebrated beverages of all time. Um, and then even the art of sabering, it came back uh, from Napoleon. Um, after every victory, they would saber a bottle of the champagne. So that's where the tradition started. Oh, that's wow. Napoleon. So should we start unwrapping so it's our bottle? I would say unwrap, <laughs> you, could, you can start by unwrapping the foil, okay. but keep the cage on, okay? Because that's for safety. Keep the cage on. Yes, keep the cage on, okay? And so you're ready to go. Oh, I see. So I'm a professional, so I've done this before. <laughs> okay, so. It's Does so it help cold. To take it and you never point a bottle at nope. someone you don't intend to saber with it. Yep. So like a gun. So you want to hold on to that for right now? You're at a good place. Okay, I'm so. Keep my cage on. Keep your cage on, okay. okay. But are we ready to go for oh, it? There we go. Show us a little demonstration. Yes, All ready? Please. Wonderful. One. Okay, let me take a step back here. Two, ready? Yeah. Right, one, here we go. One, two. Yeah. Here we go. Wow. 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 We're going to pour well, a little bit just here. Just like the polling. There we go. <laughs> yes. All the celebration. Minus all the death. Here we go. Listen, I, I got out here early. There's so okay. potential. I got out here early and tried to get some, some pointers, and so, that's not having it. She's just like, let's, let's go. we got to figure it out. Didn't she right, say, are you ready? Go, Joey, the K, Don? Well, not. We're all good now. Uh, not once you do it, though. Oh, oh, so, oh God, God, we gotta watch go. Your head. You're just going to guide it up, <laughs> point it up a little higher. See, there could still be dead. One, two, let it rip. Come on, one more time. Okay, you ready? One. Come on, one you more time. Hit Big boy muscles. One oh, more time. Oh, you you get ready. It. You ready for it now? One more yeah, time. You might want to close your eyes. Oh, there yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Done. Ready, Lil? Right, you, right, you, 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 sure. you, you don't want yeah, to. You're not going to get out of this. Oh, well, we took the whole foil there off there. All right. All right. Do it with authority, like you mean it. Like I mean it. Yeah, I'm going to go way over here. There we go. Wow. Cheers, everybody. And last but not least, my love. We're going to do this here. Okay. 
So I didn't know how to gonna, take the cage no off. No worries, honey. Got All right. Here. Okay, I've got the saber. Okay. Though. You can do it. You left your righty. Just give it a little oomph. <laughs> you know? Yep. Oh, do it like you mean it. Here you go, my love. Feels very dangerous. Here you go, Rachel. But yeah. All right. <laughs> Feels very dangerous. Let's <laughs> go. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> she was way too delicate. She didn't slide across. There the Well, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't doubt All right. Very, look at that poor. She's my kind of poor. Yes, love All right, that guys, for you. more Fox and Friends coming right up. Thanks, you, babe. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay.